Well, it wouldn't be a day with Mark's mower if a capacitor didn't explode and start, start blowing smoke out. So, that's great. Uh, couldn't get the clutch to engage. Uh, then I parked her, and then that happened. Battery was dead this morning. So, jump started it. And, uh, yeah, now, now we've, uh, we let too much of the, you know, John Deere brand green and yellow factory smoke out, so I don't think she's gonna work anymore. Um, yeah, we don't get an hour meter anymore. That's probably not a good sign. Huh. So the Mark's Mower Saga starts again. Ignore the background music, but... I don't think this is supposed to make that noise. Huh. Yep. I think, uh, I think shit might be fucked. Well, she's back over here at the shop. She didn't fight too much getting on the trailer. Um, I did try and use a battery with some jumper cables to try and get it to run. And I got the solenoid to click, but it shot a little bit more of that factory smoke out and uh, never did actually start. So pretty sure whatever that circuit board does uh, has something to do with the uh, starter circuit and uh, it's fucked. So I'm gonna pull her off of the trailer here and uh, Oh, for the best. I'm, I have a sneaking suspicion it's one of them $500 John Deere circuit boards, but we'll diagnose it. This may be the end of Mark's mower. All right, well, it's the middle of the night now, but I did a little bit of research, and so it turns out that this whole motherboard doohickey up in here, along with the ignition switch back here, are all one continuous unit. So this this is your ignition module right here and uh they're about 125 bucks um from china 250 if you want it from john deere so worse comes to wear that's what it's going to set us back i think i'm going to use one for about 80 bucks but my thought is to just pull this all out of here and see if i can replace this here you know capacitor that let all the smoke out and i'm hoping that should just be a fairly simple fix and uh shouldn't you know explode again after that and if it does you know i probably would have bought you know a five pack of those and uh, we can try it again and if it still fucks up then we know something else burn out that's and you know the capacitor shooting smoke out was just a symptom of something else shorting also it seems that it's it was the dead battery that caused it everything i saw everyone else who had this problem they jump started their mower and then this blew up immediately afterwards, and this PTO not working was also another symptom they had. So I'm thinking it was the dead battery, not the jump starting. I don't think the jump starting did it because all that really is doing is just increasing, is just hooking up another battery in, uh, um, in uh, parallel. So that shouldn't cause any additional problems. Um, I think what it is is trying to run this thing with a dead battery just off of the alternator. Uh, I'm no electro magician, but I think that's putting some kind of amp strain somewhere up in here. It's putting too much of the, the fucking electric juice in the wrong places. It's, you know, there's too much of a load on the system, and that just causes that capacitor to, uh, you know, shit the bed. All right, let's see if we can pull this out of here. So clearly we're going to have to unplug these two harnesses right here. And then got to pull the key out, throw that over here. And, yep, twist knob right here. That just unscrews. So that comes out, and this should just boop on down in there. All nice like. And then, might have a clip in there. I didn't look up anything. I'm just doing all this real time. Yeah, that comes out just like that. And then, yep, then this clip right here, this guy's got to come off. Gonna need a screwdriver for that. And then it should just be this set of plugs right here. And then I think there are three quarter inch, yep, three quarter inch slash flathead screws. I'm gonna pull that out and uh, I'll confirm or deny for you. All right, well that sucker's out. It was in there with the world's longest screws. I don't know why they're that long, but 
Anyway, I think this thing is a little more foobar than I thought it was. Because pulling it over here, you look right there. Uh, clearly these resistors uh, put up, you know, a little bit of resistance. And uh, in the end, they uh, lost the battle. Because uh, those two guys right there are totally fried. Uh, and we know that capacitor right there is blown at the very least. So, uh, yeah. So it's at least three components on there that are going to have to get replaced. Um, if I can find a spec sheet for this thing, I can probably figure out what those are and just resolder them on there. Um, and then spray some more polyurethane on it because this thing is, is, it's a hardened board. You can see right there, it's got a layer of polyurethane the whole way around. But, uh, yeah, as you can see there, we burnt some shit. Um, shorted some stuff out. Two of those resistors exploded. All right, well, I'm going to attempt to repair this. I'm going to give it a try. At least I'm going to go look up, see if I can find any... If I cannot find anything on what these two resistors are, then I'm kind of shit out of luck. Thankfully, this capacitor has stuff printed on the side of it. So, that shouldn't be too hard to replace, but those... Those resistors are going to be... A lot more annoying just to figure out what they are, but if I can find a, a spec sheet on this board, then that shouldn't be an impossible feat. And I mean, just replace those three and just hope for the best. I mean, these, quite literally, the, the solder melted off of these resistors down in here. So, that's definitely fucked. Also, the battery is reading 10.5, so that's a pretty good sign that the battery's toast. I'm going to boil it for a couple hours, see if it holds the charge, but could be that the battery is failed. It's got a dead cell in it. So we're already looking, if I can't fix this board, then I gotta buy, I mean, I have to buy a new battery anyway, so that's gonna set us back probably 75 bucks. Uh, it's group 51, uh, might be able to get that for maybe 60 or something from Wally World. And uh, probably gonna end up having to buy a board, so that's gonna be, if I can't get a used one that's functional, that's gonna be 120, 135. So we're already looking at close to a $200 fix. If I can get a used board and a cheap battery, Maybe 150, maybe a little less. Um, if I can, if I can patch that board, then it'll just be the battery. So we'll probably be under 100 dollars then. Hopefully, it depends on how much those components cost. I'm hope, I'm hoping I can just get some cheap Chinese shit off a of wish and a can of polyur, can of spray polyurethane and call it a day. Or maybe I think this actually might be RTV that's on here. So I think I may just be able to get away with some gasket maker or some clear uh, silicone RTV. We'll see. Uh, but uh. Yeah, I'm going to do some research and I'll get back to you and boil this battery and see if it's good or not. Quick quick diversion, just for a second. I want to complain about this whole thing. Why is there not a butt connector right here for the ignition? I really do not understand. Like, even if it's just for these three wires and this heavy, you know, red lead um, has a, uh, like, you know, a little eyelid or something down here, there is absolutely no reason why this... The, why the ignition and this board need to be one unit. That is just stupid. That's got to be a money grab, some sort of relative engineering. Some relatives engineered this damn thing and they didn't have the heart to tell their boss their cousin was an idiot or something. But there really needs to be a butt connector right here so that you don't have to replace this entire thing if you blow the ignition. Because, I mean, I mean, how hard would that have, that have been? Just one more plug. You got a plug like this, just put, you know, four more of those right there and then you could just on disconnect the ignition cylinder if you know that got rained in and blew out just that's stupid all right well i had to jumper it with the uh other battery i think i'm gonna pull that off and let her go a little bit longer here well it looks like she's stone cold dead because if you look down in here, it's saying zero amps after I disconnected that, so that's usually a sign that the battery is totally fucked. Because uh, on a good battery, it'll just sit at about two amps the entire time, which is what it was doing right there before I disconnected that. I'm not hearing any noise out of it, so I think the battery is well and truly fucked. Well, that ain't good. Well, I got the voltmeter hooked up to her, and uh... That's not a good sign. Um, it is very. It was at like 12 something when I first hooked it up, and it is just plummeting down. So we'll let that sit overnight, and if we drop below 11, then we know this thing is fucked. All right. Well, it's been a couple of hours, and we're back down to 1066. So this battery is definitely toast. I did make some headway on trying to find resistors. Um, turns out 
the center one is orange orange gold gold which I think is a 3.3 um, it's a it's a half watt 3.3 uh, ohm resistor with a 5% tolerance and the one on the outside next to the capacitor is a um, orange orange black gold a 33 ohm half watt 5% tolerance resistor and it looks like I can get a pack of capacitors and a pack of each type of resistor for nine bucks six bucks and six bucks so that ends up being like 21 bucks to get all the parts and then I have multiple shots at it so I think I may just go that route. I struck out on trying to find a pirated um, tech manual for that mower. But uh, I think I may just, you know, buy some cheap Chinese resistors. I think the ones that are on there are like carbon um, resistors. So I'll just replace them with some fucking thin or thick film or something. By the way, I have no idea what I'm saying right now. This is all the, re all the research I've just been able to do in the last, like, 30 minutes in my vodka fueled frenzy because uh, I'm not an electrician. I'm not an electrical engineer and I have absolutely no idea what the fuck I'm doing. I just know that I've put the red one on that one and the black one on that one and it makes the number do the thing. All right, so I've been doing some research and I think I know all the parts I need to buy. So this is a um, 3300 uh, micro ferrule, whatever that um, whatever that unit is, a 16 volt uh, aluminum electrolyte capacitor. And uh, that guy failed catastrophically and uh, vaporized the electrolyte and blew steam out the end of it. That wasn't smoke, it was steam. Um, so this guy is fucked and shorted. This over here is a 3.3 ohm carbon composition resistor, half watt. As far as I can tell, might be a watt, but I'm pretty sure it's a half watt based off the dimensions. It's 3.2 millimeters in diameter, and I think 9.2 in length. And I think these guys are a little bit longer than these uh, thin film resistors. So I think this is the same half watt uh, size as this guy. This guy is also half watt carbon composition resistor. This is a 33 ohm uh, resistor. Uh, both of these are 5% uh, tolerance. And came over here and tested everything with the multimeter. This is the 33, this is the 3.3, and this is the capacitor. Negative lead, positive lead. Capacitor is polarized. And if I check the ohms on the 33 ohm resistor, as you can see, it reads a little under 14 ohms. So about half of the resistance is gone off of this. So it has somehow it has gotten less resistive by burning out. I guess that might be a quirk of these carbon composition resistors. And if we check over here on the 3.3 ohm, if you let it go long enough, it'll actually get down into spec. It's allowed 5% tolerance, which is uh, up to 3.45 ohms. Just a minute ago, I got it to read 3.4. Uh, these carbon composition resistors apparently uh, better uh, handle uh, amp surges. They don't fry as easily, and uh, it, that appears to be correct, but it makes them harder to get, a little more expensive. So this one may still be good, but we're going to replace it anyway because we're already going to have to pull stuff off the board and resolder. But that one may not be totally gone. And if we switch this guy up to 200 or 2000k ohms and te test the capacitor, see we still have some capacitance. It's actually reading just a million ohms. So this capacitor may still be good. Let me short that out. Try that again just to see if it's got any charge built up in it. Yeah, see, we're re reading a million ohms, so she's popped. I don't think she's supposed to be that high. But, yeah, uh, I was able to find uh, all this stuff off of eBay. Um, I couldn't find carbon composition resistors on Amazon, but I was able to get them for fairly cheap off of eBay. I think I was able to get 10 of these for, like, 5 bucks, 5 of these for 10 bucks, and 10 of these for 10, 8, 9 bucks, something like that. I ended up spending... What was it? No, I math done at it. But I ended up spending $22 on parts. It's worth it um, uh, for me to try and repair this thing instead of spending $130 on a new one or $80 on a used one with unknown, you know, life expectancy. So that's what we're going to try and do. And hopefully this works and saves me some money. Uh, although this is not on my tab. This is on work tab. But I want to try and save them some money so I don't have to go through the effort of trying to buy a used lawnmower from somebody else because this one... 
This sucker over here is in great mechanical shape. It's just all this weird peripheral John Deere bullshit keeps breaking. But anywho, I digress. We're gonna try and fix it. And all this comes with the caveat that I am not an electrical engineer. I am not an electrician. I have never worked on any sort of, you know, small end electronics at all, pretty much ever in my life. This is all just what I remember from high school and the like small amount of electrical repair knowledge I've gained working on cars, which is mostly just, oh, it, it don't work. And it says that it, it, which is pretty much just testing ignition coils and verifying relays work. So uh, this is all a new frontier to me, but uh, hopefully I can, I can throw my, you know, Cro-Magnum knuckle dragon smooth brain mechanical repair brain at this thing and uh, learn me some electrical stuff. So uh, let's see if I can fix this shit. All right, well, while I'm waiting on electrical components to arrive so I can fix the ignition module, I uh, figured I might as well do a few small maintenance things as well as some service stuff, since, you know, I'm going to be waiting around for probably another six months before this stuff shows up from China. Everything said it was shipping from the U.S., but you know how that is. It usually ends up coming some sort of fucking, like, electronic, you know, economy mail from China and it takes a month and a half but whatever might have the stuff next week might be another couple of months so I'm working on a few small things so this was something that was a massive pain in my ass is that uh this uh transmission disconnect was totally seized I could pull on this as hard as I physically could and it wouldn't move but with a adequate application of liquid wrench, a moderate application of elbow grease, and a judicious application of three-in-one small engine oil. We got that thing moving nice and free, so I should be able to roll this thing around without having to clamp down the pedals. Hopefully. I can pray. And then uh, I think I'm going to change on the oil again on this thing, and I might even take a crack at trying to band-aid this cowl back together. We shall see. But... Yeah, a few more small things, then off to the ignition module. All right, well, I think we may have just done it. So I got some carbon composite resistors off of eBay, 33s and um, 3.3s, whichever was which. I wrote it down and I did them right. As well as some uh, 3300 microfarad 16 volt capacitors. And I've just finished soldering all of those onto the board. So as you can see, new resistor, new resistor, new capacitor. And uh, here's the old capacitor. Definitely melted, definitely blown. Both of the both of the resistors disintegrated when I tried to pull them out with the pliers. Uh, lost my soldering iron. It's buried somewhere in the garage. So I went and bought this thing. Um, overpaid for it. I got the $40 one with the stand because I thought the stand was really neat and I thought I was getting the $30 soldering iron with it, but it looks like I got the $20 soldering iron and uh, basically a glorified, you know, power meter for the plug. But anyway, I digress. It's a million times better than the old one I was using. And uh, yeah, uh, I've got no idea with what I'm doing, but uh, I think that might be uh, good enough to do a test run, and uh, if the engine runs just fine off of that, I got some Neutral Cure um, Clear Silicone, and we're going to use that to seal up the uh, burnt out um, circuit board and uh, all of these new solder contacts as well as around the base of the capacitor and on top of both the resistors. So uh, I think it's time we throw this thing in the uh, mower and uh, see if it burns this out. Also, I um, I got a uh, 275 cold cranking amp U1 battery because the Group 51s were all too expensive. I wanted to get a 340, but they were sold out everywhere, so I went with a 275. Um, my dad's Troy built with a 25 horse engine runs just fine off of a 300. I don't think the 275 is going to make a difference for this 22 horsepower Kawasaki, but I digress. Let's throw this in the mower and see if it works, or if I've wasted the last week and a half. All right, it's all wired up. Smoke test time. Oh yeah, safeties. All right, smoke test. Well, nothing's on fire yet. Right, let's give her a whiff of ether and try again. Ether in the air cleaner. Not quite enough. Now, 
Something else got to be worked on. Pass the smoke test. All right. Well, she runs, she drives, she cranks, she cuts grass even. Went up there and just cut around that bush real quick. Everything works fine, far as I can tell. Nothing looks burnt at all. No smoke came out except for out of the engine, but that's normal. You know, none of these guys look burnt. You know, nothing back here looks any more burnt than normal, so I think I'm good to put some insulation on it. Let that cure and uh, throw it back in. I think we'll be good to go on that, so I'm glad that worked. Um, this battery seems to be just fine. Doesn't have any complaints, so it was a voltage issue, not an amperage issue. Um, these cheapo Chinese um, terminal adapters I got off of Amazon are uh, universal size, which means they universally don't work for shit. So I had to really cl clamp down on the positive to get it to fit. Then I had to flare the negative out as far as it would possibly go to get it to fit. Um, this makes the engine a little bit more sensitive um, to a cranking, so it'll probably die a lot more. Um, really have to get the connection good over there, so I'll probably have to come in here and clean this up a little bit more. I uh, may not be able to take it on and off like we've been doing, um, but it seems to have, you know, plenty of amps to crank it. It's just it doesn't really have a lot of capacity for, do it, for doing it too long. Uh, but then again, this battery's been sitting on a shelf for God knows how long, and then I just cranked it for about, you know, 15 seconds getting this thing started and haven't really run it at all, so it could just be that it's just low. Um, mm, I'll run around and do a bunch of stuff, see if it catches fire again. But uh, anywho, while I uh, go get silicone and insulate that, um, I'm going to change on the oil, look around, see if there's any other things I can do. Um, this U1 battery is smaller than the Group 51. It's not as wide. So I'm going to take this 2x6 and I'm going to carve it up and make a little spacer in here so that I can just slide it down in there and it'll sit about, I don't know, a half inch below the top of the battery and then I'll... Um, screw a little piece on the side of it so it sits around on the front because um, otherwise it's going to do this and wander back and that's just because there's there's power gap um, and I just don't want the battery going around and doing all this and sliding around and all that crap so we'll fix on that but yeah everything seems to be working fine so that's a big relief for me um, no smoke um, yeah that's fighting me again but we, you know, we figured it out with a 1 in 16, a adjustable wrench, and a 3 eighths, and a little bit of stupidity. So yeah, we're going to do an oil change at the very least, and probably the filter too. Alright, well that's all been gooed up. So I made sure to cover all the burnt motherboard over here and everything. I'm just going to let that sit out in the sun, and try not to get this stupid red wire mangled up and everything if it would just stay the fuck away good lord but anywho i don't know if i explained that well enough before but i am using this stuff right here um ge284 this is a neutral cure silicone um sealant and neutral cure is important if you use just regular silicone it's basically rtv it's got um it releases acetic acid which is vinegar and it'll actually corrode electronics so just for long term you know um, health of the electronics so that you don't accidentally corrode them underneath the silicone that's supposed to be protecting them from corrosion, use a neutral cure. And I know this GE284 stuff is neutral cure and it will work. I don't know how well it'll work. It is not, you know, designed for electronic compot or potting, but it is $3 at Walmart, so you know I'm going to use it. And... <sighs> That should be uh, better than nothing at the very least. Uh, it's certainly cheaper than polyurethane, certainly a lot cheaper to scrape off if I have to do this again. So that's what we're going for. Now I'm going to go over here and do some tune-up stuff. Uh, I got these spark plugs that were in this box that Mark gave me, and uh, they're not the same as what's in there. What's in there are BPR4ES uh, from NGK, and these are um, BPR5ES, so I think they're probably identical. I don't know if they've got a different heat range or something like that. Uh, but these are the only new ones I have. Figure, 
fuck it, might, or, might as well, it's in the shop, might as well do spark plugs, and same, I'm gonna do oil, and I'm gonna do the oil filter, but everything's just gonna be fucked. We're putting in a different spark plug, we're putting in this brand new oil filter that is covered in rust, I'm gonna try and scrape some of that off, but I'm not too worried about it. Um, I believe that is the, is that the outflow, or the inflow? I don't know how well, I guess that's the outflow. So that's in the worst possible place. We're gonna ignore it. I've got, what is that? 12 ounces of this John Deere um, Turf Guard 10W30, uh, an ounce of this Valvoline 10W30, and a whole quart of this Pennzoil 10W30 that is, I'm sure, older than I am. Uh, probably says it on there somewhere, but anywho. I think I should be able to get away with both of those. I think it takes 1.8, 1.9 on a fresh oil change. So, well, I am gonna have to, I'll just dump in all that, all of that, and a touch of that. And we'll just run three different kinds of oil in there because you're not supposed to run two, but if we run three, maybe it'll work. I don't know. Also, John Deere kind of spec'd the oil for this engine totally fucking wrong. I pulled up the, the manual for the Kawasaki and uh, the, the Kawasaki uh, 20 horse V-twin uh, actually specs 20W50 for my climate, uh, or 10W40, and it says under no circumstances should you be running 10W30 in this engine uh, in the kind of climate I live in, where it is, where my phone overheats and it's whatever fucking temperature that says out over there, 80 something, it's in the shade, it doesn't count. So uh, I really should be running 20W50 in it. So uh, we'll just run three different kinds of 10W30 because it's been run in 10W30 its entire life. Don't know why John Deere spec'd it that way. The only thing they really, you know, did right on this whole thing was buying a Kawasaki and designing that deck. Um, everything else is kind of fucky, but anywho, I digress. I'm gonna get to this while I wait for that to cure, and we'll throw it back in there, and then I'll probably cut my yard somewhere and uh, see if it catches fire or not. Okie dokie, so we've got the mower jacked up all safe-like. Yep, very safe. OSHA approved. And uh, we're just draining out all the oil, popped the cap, <clears throat> took off the plug, and uh, we're just draining it down into here into this uh, unwashed ocean spray bottle that I cleaned out with carb cleaner and uh, this unwashed funnel that is covered in sand so that <clears throat> I can then pour it in this piece of shit over here. Which uh, I don't think is ever going to live, but uh, you know, used, uh, used lawn tractor oil is probably better than water. So yeah, well, we'll just, we'll do that. All right, so I was looking in here in the cowl trying to remember what the hell the uh, spark gap was. I'm pretty sure it's 0.3 or 0.03, but I'll check. And uh, it looks like they actually spec'd um, just straight 30 weight. So uh, we're gonna do the right thing and just continue to put three different kinds of 10W30 in it. And uh, I'm gonna go Google the uh, spark plug gap. All right, drink up, little mower. No going back. You're getting the hodgepodge. Will you get the fuck out of here, Wasp? I don't need you building shit down in my damn exhaust. See, I told you to fuck. All right, I think we're about ready to huck everything back together and uh, go cut some grass and see if it catches fire and burns down or not. Um, this has been sitting out here in the sun for probably an hour and a half, and uh, everything seems pretty dry to me. Still a little bit soft. I think I might let it sit a little bit longer, but oil's changed. Um, did not prime the filter, so I'm sure we'll throw a rod or something, spin a bearing in the, you know, quarter second that's on there. Wrote hours on there in China Marker because uh, Sharpie apparently doesn't last up here in the sun. Uh, let's see, got me a uh, John Deere factory U1, or Group 51 to U1 battery tray adapter, which is a piece of treated 2x6 that uh, I cut to a 5.5 square. And then this is just a four inch piece that I've got butt joined up here. And then I took a rasp and just rounded the corner so I don't wear through my rubber band. And now that's in there. Pretty, it's kind of solid. Good enough. And I'm sure that rubber band will break. And all I gotta do is just throw that back in there. Oh, and I uh, changed the spark plugs. Uh, I went and used the, uh, the, whatever they were, the uh, BPR 5 ESs. Um, turns out the only difference between the five and the four is that the five has threads in here for screw on terminals so totally fine to use in the application for the four no issue there and yeah three different flavors of oil in it we shall see how she runs all right everything's hooked back up everything is nice and gooey 
So I didn't fill the oil filter before I put that on, so I'm just gonna crank it over a little bit. Actually, that's a terrible idea, I'm gonna kill it. So I'm just gonna fire on up and uh, run around for just a little bit, put some charge on the battery, and uh, then I gotta do a dump run. So uh, let, me, let me put you down on my lap, just like Santa Claus real quick, and uh, I'll get a running. Well, she cranked and she's dead again. Um, I ain't seen anything exploded. I think we may just not have a ju enough juice on the battery. Yeah, we still got the hour meter. Yep, well, time to go get the jumper cables and the other battery. And, uh, Actually, no, let's not do that. Let's throw this battery on charge and uh, then run to the dump real quick because uh, I'm not smoking another motherboard. All right, well, battery's out and I'm gonna go boil that while I do a dump run, but I did also note that this oil light is coming on. So I have a sneaking suspicion that it thinks I uh, overfilled the engine because uh, I didn't fill the oil filter before I poured oil in there. And I think I might spin that off and see if anything comes out. Um, because I just put the voltmeter on the battery and it says 12.5, so I don't think it's dead. Um, and it seems odd to me that this thing would go and crank and then just go click and shut off. Because um, it seems like something is preempting the, uh, the solenoid, because I'm not hearing click, it's just doing nothing. So I think one of the safeties is fucking with me. But uh, we'll boil that and see if it makes a difference, and if it doesn't, then I'm going to have to tip it over a little bit and drain out some of the oil, or uh, I'll get my sucky boy and suck it out. We shall see. All right, so I pulled this rusty fucker off and uh, I have a horrible habit of over tightening oil filters because uh, if I don't over tighten oil filters in yonder Jeep, they leak like a fucking sieve and then I think I've blown an oil pressure sensor or front main seal and that's happened to me multiple times. So I have a bad habit of over torquing oil filters because the thing I change oil filters on the most has to be over torqued. But I digress, had to fucking use a towel and the wrench and everything and bent the shit out of that and I only put that on hand tight so I guess it was just hot and the thing swole but anywho as you can see there is absolutely no oil in the filter so that's probably what's uh pissing off the uh safeties so uh I don't really know what to do I guess I need to go crack open the drain and just pour some into this and uh then tighten it all back up and just throw this thing back on there that's what I'm gonna do because uh I don't really want to waste any more oil and I definitely cannot put any more in the crankcase. All right, so I filled that up about halfway and soaked all the media. So we're gonna thread that on there all quick like, just hand tight. And hopefully it was indeed just the sensor and uh, it should be okay with that. See, that's as far as I put it on before, but for whatever reason, I couldn't take it off by hand. There's absolutely no way I had that on another full turn. I don't fucking know. But, anywho, I'm going to hook everything back up, see if she'll crank again, because uh, I have a feeling it was just that. Alright, let's try this one more time. Yeah. All I got there was one solenoid click. Okay, I guess let's boil the battery. About all I can do at this point. All right, so I'm pulling the battery out and I noticed two small things. One, this terminal was a little loose, so it had some wiggle to it, so that may have been giving it a bad uh, connection and that may have been why we weren't getting enough amps. Still gonna boil it just to be safe. Um, and I uh, also noticed that uh, terminal bolts were on uh, backwards. So you see this? You see how there's that little shelf there? Well, the square head's supposed to be on that side so that it doesn't, you know, rotate. And uh, also these lock nuts, um, pro tip, you put them on backwards and uh, that acts as a little standoff where the uh, nylock is. And uh, that'll let you uh, get a wrench on a lot better. So uh, I'm gonna flip that one around. I already flipped this one around. See what I mean? And uh, pull that out, boil it, do a dump run, and uh, be back in a jiffy. All right, she's a boiling. Looks like she was down pretty good. So I'm gonna run the dump. I'll be back in like 30 minutes and it should have some juice on it by then yeah well it's coming down pretty good 
When it gets down to about two, that's when it's about done, but I'll just leave it. Let it sit the whole time. All right, well, it's been 35 minutes, and uh, that looks to be mostly boiled. So we'll pull it off and uh, see if it runs the mower, and then we'll charge it. All right, so I hooked the car battery up to it in parallel, and now I get a much brighter light for the battery. It was giving me a really weak light, but still absolutely nothing. So it's not the battery. Only thing I can think of is, unless there's some sort of weird safety switch with the oil, which I don't think there is, because um, I, I also took all the plugs out, pulled them off, put it back on about five times. That didn't make a difference. The only other thing that has changed since the last time it ran was I put silicone on it. So I think silicone might be shorting it out. So I'm actually going to get in there and clean all the silicone out and uh, try it again. And if it works, then we know that uh, that silicone that I got is uh, not actually uh, safe for um, electronical potting. So uh, we'll see. But it could be that it's not all cured and it's actually uh, conductive and it's shorting out that capacitor. Uh, that's my thought at least. So uh, I think I'm going to let this sit overnight and let everything cure and uh, then try it again in the morning. And if uh, we still have no luck, uh, then uh, clean off that silicone. All right, well, I just took the voltmeter and I measured impedance on both the resistors and they're still where they're supposed to be. Uh, oddly, this one is like 31 now for some reason, but we're gonna ignore that. Um, the other one is like 3.8. So they're both right where they're supposed to be. Uh, this is also a third voltmeter that I haven't used before, so it's probably just being funny and reading like a $10 Chinese voltmeter. Um, I bridged the starter, and I can get the solenoid to click, I can't get it to spin, but I can bridge the gap on this wire with here and get the solenoid to click. I can't really get it to spin though when I bridge these two, probably just because this bolt is totally fucking corroded. So. I don't really know because I'm not getting a click and I'm not getting any kind of spinning at all. And uh, I can turn the engine, you know, by hand. So it's not like it's seized. I just really don't fucking know. It, the only thing that it could be is I guess it's potentially silicone is shorting out this capacitor or that capacitor died already. I don't know, but the resistors are fine. Um, I'm just going to let this thing sit for like two days and try it again. And if it still ain't working, I'm gonna pull it off, clean all the silicone, try it again. If it still doesn't work, then I think the starter just just happened to die at the exact same time. I don't fucking know. Maybe it's this fucking ground wire right here. I'm not really sure. But something just ain't quite right. Uh, all right, so I went and did some research and I can't find jack shit. Um, if it's not the motherboard, I don't know what it is. And unless I buy another one, I don't really have a way to diagnose it. The only other thing I can think of is it's the starter. And I'm, I was just over here ohming things out just to see if, you know, anything was suddenly bad. And all I really noticed is that, uh, that, uh, that copper cable that connects the, uh, solenoid to the, uh, the starter body, that was totally corroded and disintegrated. I stuck the probe in there and pushed it down and it just knocked everything out. So that was gone. So that may be the problem right there. I don't know. Once again, I could not, shorting from this to this, I could get not get the starter to spin. However, the thing that is uh, kind of concerning me is um, I'm not getting the solenoid clicking and I don't know if that strap makes a difference. I don't know if that this is grounded to the body because I checked right there and I don't have any impedance from there to the negative battery terminal. I don't have any impedance off of the valve head. It's kind of hard to get the impedance off of the body here. It's spotty. Um, I haven't tried it since I knocked that shit out. I had good. Didn't have any impedance down here. So I have a feeling that that strap was kind of redundant and it's actually grounding through the body. Um, I'll keep poking around. Things are not looking good. At the very least, I probably need to replace that right there. And uh, I guess pull this sucker back out and uh, worse comes to wear, replace the capacitor because I'm pretty certain both resistors are fine. Scrape out or scrape out all the silicone, see if that works, that doesn't work. Um, 
pull the uh, pull the capacitor out, replace it, or at least test it before I do that. Um, the uh, neutral safety switch still works. The butt sensor still works. The electronic clutch still works. So I, I assume the the safety switch for the clutch still works. Um, I was fiddling around with all of that. It's just for whatever reason, nothing happens. I get nothing. I don't even get anything out of there anymore. I'm getting relays clicking up in wherever the hell I am. These two guys, they're both clicking. So I know those are fine. But just fucking nothing. And you can listen to the clutch. Oh, I have to turn the key on. Oh, you hear it. It's a clunkin', and uh, I know the neutral safety switch works because if I take it off and then I stand up, you see that the butt sensor works, and if I do this, I engage the neutral safety switch, and then I stand up, it doesn't shut down. So I know that at the very least, that and that, those interlocks work. Not certain about this one, but I know that it clicks. So, at the very least, the clutch is working. If the clutch is working, I'm assuming the switch is probably wired up to the same power, I would think. Yeah, um, I could try and boil the battery again, but, but you know, you saw I hooked it up in parallel and didn't do anything. Um, I don't really know how to test. I can pull the starter out, test it on the bench, and fix that wire. That's probably what I'm going to have to do. Unless I find something else out, but it just seems really strange to me that the starter would suddenly die. I mean, I wasn't really fucking around in here. I mean, I was messing with this, but it's not like I was fucking in here doing shit. I don't really know. All I did was change the oil and change the spark plugs. The only extra thing I unplugged was this spade connector over here, which I'm assuming is the oil pressure sensor. And I cleaned that before I put it back on. And... I, I don't think this has a an oil interlock like I was thinking. I just don't fucking know. Motor's starting to piss me off again. All right, well we have progress. So I have disconnected the uh, the hot wire from the uh, starter uh, solenoid. Uh, this is the wire that sends the signal voltage to the solenoid to, you know, engage the solenoid and spin the motor. And so I've got positive hooked up to that. And if I just touch it right here to this ground. I just realized you're not going to be able to see it, but, uh, well, hell, um, I gotta jam this somewhere. Give me a second. So I think I got that figured out. So that is jammed into the wire coming from the circuit board to the starter solenoid. The one of th four wires attached to the, uh, <clears throat> starter solenoid. There's main, this is literally the fucking positive battery cable. There's a wire coming off of that that is main power for fucking everything else. There is this wire, which goes up into that loom and comes up right over here, and it's probably one of these 700 purple wires that goes into here. Um, and that's how the power gets out of the motherboard and into the solenoid. And then there is that grounding strap that goes from that solenoid to the starter. And so I have just hooked that black line up to the battery before I was just touching it right there to this spot I scraped on the side of the starter. So trust me, it works all the way at the starter. So we have, it's not like it's, you know, not grounded. Plus I'd fucking probably blow this thing up if I tried that. But uh, see this? So starter is engaged. I have 12.4 volts right there to that guy. Let go, voltage goes away. So we're getting 12, 12 volts to uh, the starter, uh, to the solenoid, and the uh, starter's not spinning over. So I think the starter is fucked, or something has gone wrong with this positive battery cable, and the juice ain't just get just ain't getting through to it. That's the only other, that's the only two fucking things it could be. I mean, it's it's either the starter is fucked, or that wire is fucked, and I don't really think this wire is fucked. I mean, it looks fine to me. 
Like, unless this connection right here just suddenly shit the bed or something. But I guess I have to pull the starter now and uh, fiddle with everything and see if I can get, you know, just clean up everything, replace that grounding strap, bench test it, see if I can get it to the solenoid to engage and the starter to spin. Because I could not get the starter to spin. So, I don't know. Uh, I honestly don't fucking know. But we're, we're going to pull out the starter and tinker with it. Because uh, I think we just have simultaneous imposter problems all popping up at the same time that make... Uh, my life uh, a real pain in the ass to try and diagnose things. Alright, it's been a couple days. It's been raining like a motherfucker so I haven't gotten a chance to get to the starter but I just came out here real quick and uh, I did confirm the issue. I just jammed a screwdriver right in here and uh, I'm not going to be able to do it one-handed in the rain but uh, if I shove a screwdriver in there as soon as the screwdriver falls out it stops cranking. So that is indeed the entire crux of the problem is it just so happens that when I change the... Ooh, that's hot as fuck. Uh, it just so happens that I, uh, when I, um, change the, uh, oil, put a little bit of a twerk on that there starter, and that whole wire failed. Just miraculously. So, all I gotta do is get that starter off, fix that wire, and, uh, Mark's mower should be back in action, but she may actually be retired here because I think someone gave us a zero turn. So it may be Tom's mower here shortly. I've needed a green John Deere to go with my red, you know, 60s muscle car so that I can do the, you know, the full 30-year-old boomer um, persona. But uh, we shall see. So all I, all I got to do is fix that one wire and we'll get the mower running. But we got a whole bunch of this shit going on right now, so I'm not going to be able to get to that. Alright, so it's mostly kind of stopped raining, and uh, I'm going to pull this starter off real quick, so I'm going to just show you, you know, real fast how you pull one of these starters off. Starters are dirt simple. So it's literally, this is a 13 millimeter nut down here. Before you do anything else though, um, disconnect your battery, just pull both off of there. Uh, that'll make your life a little bit easier. If you pull the uh, red one off, you can actually take the uh, wire with you when you pull the starter out but i digress what you got to do is disconnect this plug down here off of the solenoid on the back over here then you got to loosen up this 13 millimeter take that off i don't know why it's a 13 and not a half but it's a 13 and uh, then you gotta take these uh, two 12 millimeters out i don't know why they're 12s and not halves but i digress and that's all there is to it and starter will just come right out all right there we go starters out don't even take five minutes so it is just that, just that 13 millimeter, and uh, these two 12 millimeters, that comes right out. You just unplug this plug right here, and uh, there is a uh, lock washer on the bottom of the starter down here. Don't lose it. So, order to put it back in, just, you know, because I'm going to forget to tell you, is the uh, this wire right here, main, main power up there to the board. That goes on first, then positive battery cable then lock washer then nut and just torque that down till the lock washer seats you know and with me i'm reusing this so i'm gonna clean up all this all these bolts and all that stuff but uh, what i gotta do is get in here and just replace this wire right here just this little connection right there between that post and this wire that goes in here into the housing i've got to take this butt cap off and uh, figure out a way to splice something onto there so I can bridge that connection. And, uh, you know, if push comes to shove, these are only like 70 bucks. You know, it's not, they're not crazy expensive, but that it is for, you know, generic Chinese one. I, this is a Denso, so I would much rather fix this, if at all possible. And, uh, yeah, that's my plan. Just, I'm going to see if I can just, you know, replace this one wire you know, running through here. I think it goes to center post over to here or something like that. If I can just replace that one wire, then that's it. So it should be good. So uh, I'm going to get to looking into that. Probably going to have to cut up a grounding strap or something like that. I don't know. Okay, well, I got the starter apart and it just about nearly got retired because I opened up this housing and I was in here messing with the brushes, trying to get some more length out of this one. I was able to get, I think, enough length to be able to just sandwich this on here. And uh, then uh, two of these guys just went pink, pink up into the fucking wild blue yonder. And I was that close, boys and girls, to fucking football hiking this thing straight into the goddamn ground. But 
I held my temper and I threw it in the trash can and then I came back and pulled it out. And I think I can probably just get another two of these springs at the hardware store. But uh, she's not in the best shape. She's got a crack back in here. Don't know how the hell that happened. But uh, I'm thinking we might just be able to smoosh down on that guy right there and get our connection back. And I'm hoping I can just go to the hardware store and find two more of these springs. So I'll just take both of those inside. Uh, run to the hardware store, see if I can get some more. And this guy just sits up on top of here, I believe, and guides the brushes like that and keeps the springs in. And then when you mess with this, all the springs shoot out. So, yeah. So I think all I need to do is just buy some springs and I'm hopefully just able to sandwich that. I'm probably going to put this case back on it and try that. And uh, a man can pray, a man can pray. All right, so I bought some springs from the hardware store. I just got the closest thing they had at my local hardware store, which I think is a little lower gauge and a little bit longer. They'll probably be fine. And I also bought this 84 piece assorted screw pack from Home Depot. And if I'm lucky, one of those is an equivalent. And I think my dog's exploding. All right, I don't think I said it before, but these are quarter inch by seven eighths by one thirty second, or about um, thirty thou for the actual gauge of the wire. Come on, camera. So I have bought quarter inch by one by twenty thou, and these are fairly soft for their gauge. Um, they had some quarter inch by one inch by like thirty thirty two thou at the hardware store, and they were way too stiff. So I went with these. And my thought is I can always clip a link off and potentially double up like that. And that's about the same strength. Although, you know, this may be overkill for this application. All it's got to do is hold the brush to the, to the shaft for, you know, a couple seconds while it cranks. That's all it's doing. Uh, this, this variety pack from, the hard, or from Home Depot ended up being a bust. Um, closest thing they've got is this like 3 8 by 1 and 3 16 this guy it actually has a taper on it push comes to shove I can cut you know the bottom inch off and probably double this up although this might actually be the right that might be sufficiently springy these are soft but I'm just gonna try those as is might double them up we'll see um, once again, all it's doing is just pushing the brush brush against the, the shaft. It's not doing anything fancy. All it has to do is push it and stay where it is. So, all right. Well, that has been done, and I made sure to put the two original springs opposite each other. Um, I forget how, <laughs> I forget how motors work, but um, I'm pretty sure I don't. If if these contacts are not going to make contact, I'm pretty sure I don't want these opposing each other. So I just alternated them. Um, and yeah, see, so that's all the meat I was able to get pull through that rubber, and I think I have enough that I can probably pull this nut off and get that eyelet off and potentially solder that eyelet back onto this wire, or at the very least, just just clamp it underneath the the you know nut and call it a day. But before I do that, I'm gonna put everything back together because I do not want to lose these springs, and that's why I'm doing this in my room right now, is so that if I lose a spring, at the very least, I can tear the whole room apart and find it. Can't just disappear into the void mostly all right so i pulled that wire out uh, i got my knife and i was able to peel back the weave enough that i was able to get just a little bit of a fork you know maybe about three sixteenths of an inch on the end of it and i just ran that fork on either side of this bolt and then i took the eyelet when the eyelet for this thing was actually not steel it was actually woven it was this big old chunk of woven copper it was just taken out it was like woven into a rope and then they just pushed like a, an awl through it and just made a hole in the wire itself. So I wasn't able to really solder it back on or anything like that. At least, you know, I wasn't really willing to try. Also, I realized that this was plastic. I was probably going to melt that because I was probably going to have to do it with a torch. But anywho, so I just got a little fork on this wire sticking out here and then I just set this eyelet on it, folded it all over since it was woven. And since it's woven, you know, it's you know, it's got a lot of grip, it's just raw wire, and I just clamp this down, and hopefully that should be good enough to uh, carry all our current. So I think it's time we go throw this in the mower and see if we can get it cranked again. 
All right, that shit's all hooked back up. So let me just throw this boot back on over here. And uh, we'll crank it on up and uh, see if the motor spins. Beautiful. All right, so I think I'm gonna go uh, put some pants on and uh, come back out here and uh, cut a little bit of grass and see if we smoke another motherboard. Choice. I think this is in fact the world's shittiest plastic. Good Lord. Diesel. All right, well, I think she's working. Uh, I'm still gonna cut some more grass, but uh, I think we have uh, managed to not smoke the motherboard. Let's see if she'll fire back up. Nope, she needs choke or a bunt sensor, one of the two. But uh, I think we're finally good. So uh, I'm gonna throw Mark's mower back on the trailer. Um, bring it on back, uh, huck it out in the rain, wait for it to break again, and uh, it'll be part eight. But uh, that's not today. So uh, if you uh, like my uh, creative solutions, how about you go down there and you like the video, uh, comment, tell me uh, what's wrong with your mower. Maybe I'll uh, poke around with this one, see if I got the same issue and try and fix it. Um, I'm sure something else will break on this here in another week or so. It'll be back in the yard. Who knows? And uh, yeah, if you want to see me continue to work on this piece of shit, John Deere GT245, uh, go down there and uh, smash that subscribe button. And until next time, time out. <laughs>